Okay, good morning. My name is Rupert Douglas Jones and I work for IPATH, the International Powered Access Federation. This morning's first discussion is on managing mute safely, which is an extraordinary topic to handle in 20 minutes, but we're going to give you an insight into it anyway. First of all, IPATH, what are we, what do we do? Very simply, we're an association owned by our members and not for profit. We have members in around 36 countries worldwide who own us. Primarily, we deal with training, safety, technical support, lobbying standards and various membership activities, as you can see there. We deal with only two types of machine, mobile elevating work platforms and mass climbing work platforms. I'm not going to do a big sales pitch because we've got a lot to get through, but the IPATH operator training program, many of you will know, is audited against IWO, I, I, SO 18878, an international standard for MUP operator training. It's internationally recognized and we're currently running the same course in 23 countries. And we have auditors who go out and check on the training centers and the instructors as they run them to make sure they're, they're of sufficient quality and standard. What makes us stand out against uh, some of the other operator courses is that we have three levels. Operators, demonstrators, and instructors. Now, demonstrators is fairly crucial in our industry, and it's one of the main subjects I'm going to be covering in a while later today. Last year, we trained just over 100,000 people. Uh, a vast proportion of those are in the UK. The license is valid for five years, Michael. A question I was asked earlier. And we provide people with log books, which you can see pictured here, so they can record their experience. They can also cover renewals and familiarization within those. Two messages I want to get across to you today. In only 20 minutes, two messages. One is familiarization. You can train personnel to operate a mute. There are over 4,500 makes and models of machines out there. You'll see some around the show. You can see a JLG just over the wall there. 4,500 makes and models, and many of them will have different controls, emergency lower systems, and physical makeups. So unless you conduct a familiarization so the, the staff who have been trained they will never know the machine they are dealing with sufficiently well to operate it safely. Familiarization is basically showing people the differences between the machine they've been trained on and the machine they're going to use. It's especially important when the machines have different weights, different heights, different controls, i.e. some of the 4,500 machines. It follows on from basic training. So we have Clive in a room, one of our instructors. Clive could train you to operate that scissor lift there, and you would be uh, licensed if you successfully pass that operator course to operate vertical type machines. You could then go and hire a 50 foot diesel vertical, very similar, but with different controls different emergency lower system and it's vital that your operators are shown the differences to be able to operate it safely. They can then apply the training that they have been given. A familiarization doesn't take long. It depends on the size and the complexity of the machine. A quarter of an hour, half an hour, depending on the complexity, maybe 45 minutes. It basically covers the instructions, the warnings, features, controls, safety devices, and emergency lower procedures. And all of this information can be found on the machine. Now this leaflet you see here is freely downloadable from the IPATH website, so please do help yourselves. Let's give you some examples. Here are some pictures of some boom controls. 
we use a mobile boom control. You'll see in brackets 3B, this is to enable anybody across Europe to apply it to a standard called EN280. EN280 is a European standard which enables the manufacturer to CE certify the machines. But it means that if Clive trains somebody in the UK using his license, he could then go to one of the other countries where it may be recognised. So long as he's familiar with the legislation, he can use that license in Spain, in Germany, in Italy, in Singapore, wherever he may wish. But please look at the different controls. There are a vast array of different platform controls out there. Emergency descent systems. Here's just a few pictures of a selection of different uh, controls. I'd like you to take a quick look at um, the decal here. There's another one on the far side you may be able to see there. This is a decal IPAF has produced to give an operator an idea where he may locate the emergency descent system on any brand of machine. Again, we try and give them out freely. We just want people to highlight where the emergency control systems are on any unit. Machines are being developed all the time. So not only are there 4,500 makes and models out there, the machines are now getting higher. 104 meters is currently available. Uh, it's a long way up. And they're doing them with outriggers, which can be used on unusual terrains. Large decks. In this case, that's a large deck boom, but it may not look like a standard boom. You can use them where they can get through narrow entrances or light weight. The manufacturers are trying to get your business. So they're producing the most weird and wonderful bespoke machines available. But it does mean your operators have to know what they're dealing with when they receive that unit. Other developments are in machine design. You're looking at a variable working envelope, but sometimes the manufacturers can bring out jibs which articulate, jibs which rotate. And if your operator isn't expecting that machine or hasn't used it, familiarization. Different weights, computerized units, dynamic movement. Dynamic movement, for those of you who aren't sure, is when the structure needs to be extended or retracted in a specific sequence to avoid overloading or overturning this sequence shall be automatic. Yes, that is taken from a standard. What's this mean to you and I? When your operator phones up and says he's got a problem with the unit because it keeps retracting itself back in, it could be the fact that it's a computerized unit, it's decided it's overextended itself and automatically retracts. Some of the higher companies will receive a phone call saying that they've got a problem with the machine. There's no problem with the machine. It could just be the operator is not aware of its capabilities. This highlights a need for greater training and is why the IPAF training is being used more and more. And I think we're just scratching the surface with the number of people that we've done, which is fast approaching half a million. So the different machines out there. The next bullet point I want to come on to, moving away from familiarization, is all based around this. Who chooses the mute that you're going to use for the task? Who's going to manage or supervise the personnel using them? Have they been trained? Do they know what they're doing if they're going to be managing or supervising them or choosing the machine? And where are they going to receive up-to-date guidance? Now, some of you in the room may be in this position yourselves. The very simple answer is we've been asked this question a lot. And we have produced a course called Mutes for Managers. This is to try and give the managerial side and the supervisors a better insight into their responsibilities if they have personnel using the machines or they're hiring equipment in. There are various things that we point out. There are regulations and standards affecting the usage of MUTES. 
accidents like this have happened and sometimes it's down to poor management and supervision of the staff. Some of them, most of them, if not all, are easily avoidable. Safe for operating methods and hazards and are they aware and able to brief the operators when doing a risk assessment or briefing them on the risk assessment as to what hazards to look out for when they're operating. Something which I'm not going to talk about much today, but I'd like you to keep your ears open. There is also a course which is being developed right now. The first trials started this week. Yesterday was the first. And within two months, I would expect IPATH to be rolling out a PAL Plus course for those people who will be operating in very hazardous or dangerous uh, environments. So there's safety beyond training. What's that actually mean? It means we need to take account of other items. If you're, doing, if you're managing machines or supervising people on them, do you know about the higher terms and conditions that you're signing when you receive the unit? There's three major brands of higher terms and conditions in the UK. IPATH, the CPA and the HAE. And some of those may have variations depending on the hire company. You may not know what your staff are actually signing you up and making you financial, financially ineligible for. I put it to you, they need to be trained. Your staff who are operating the units, as we've already covered, need to be familiarised. In addition, are they doing a daily inspection on the unit? Have you got sheets which are easy for them to fill out, records that they've actually taken place? If you have an accident, the first thing they say is, show us your paperwork, your inspection list. If you don't have one, you can't prove it's taken place. It's very simple, it's just filling in a date on a piece of paper. You can download them from the IPATH website free, they're on there now. Other problems that we face, when people are hiring the units in, do they know what sort of unit they should be looking for? Are they able to identify the structural parts to select the correct machine? Their types and use, if they get a machine which is not high enough, not suitable, because they're ordering the equipment, it's just going to cause you on-site problems. Do your staff know what sort of personal fall protection is required in different types of machines? The advice is all out there. We supply courses, IPATH supplies information free. We've just got to help you get it out there. There's technical guidance available, which is available from the IPATH website, as I've said. There's posters, there's key rings with daily checklists. Although they're generic and you'd need to apply the machine specific side, it helps the operators get into a routine when they're checking the machines. We can provide guidance on harness types, exhibition guidelines, familiarization, exiting the platform at height, which is not recommended and not authorized by the manufacturer. But if it has to happen, you need to know what to do and what to look out for. There's guidance on it. What thorough examinations you should be looking for? The assessment of ground conditions. This is going to become abundantly clear to you in a second with a bit of film footage. Avoiding trapping and crushing injuries. And rescue planning. The IPATH website, there's leaflets outside. If you, any of these you believe are of any use to you, please help yourselves. Other things your supervisors and managers may not be aware of. Your staff may already hold an IPATH license. How do you check it's valid? This gentleman at the front, Michael, asked me that earlier. Well, if you go onto the IPATH website, in the top right-hand corner, uh, you can see there's a place where you can put in the operator's details 24-7 and see if the license is valid. We're happy to take the phone calls, but you can simply go on the website and do it for yourselves within moments. Before this plays, 
this, I hope, will highlight to you how important it is for your managers and supervisors to be trained. I need to thank uh, the HSE and one of our hire companies, who to remain nameless, but have been very kind. They were at no way in fault here, but they kindly provided this uh, photographs and film footage for us. And this is by the HSE. Now, as you watch this bit of film footage, please bear in mind it is as live CCTV footage, hence the quality. You can see a site here. You can see a large deck scissor working, a diesel scissor, and a large articulated boom. Please focus on the boom, and especially on the wheels of the boom as I play. Thank you, Joe. Now this site is cordoned off, it's barriers, risk assessments in place, and the operator is manoeuvring the machine to be able to do his work from a slightly different position. Now this film footage is from the centre of Nottingham and what you've just seen is the wheel collapsing a service and very slowly, the first 45 degrees, it's starting to make its tip and go over. It took four minutes for the ambulance to arrive, so fairly quick, and the operator was not killed, he was hurt. But it's a stark reminder. Now let's show you just how simple it could have been. This is a still a shot taken by the hire company who were asked to come and help investigate what had happened. And you can now see under that wheel that the ground has collapsed. Or a close-up. When they were preparing the site, they moved gravel and spread gravel over the top of a manhole cover so it's not possible to see the manhole cover. If you have a machine that weighs, I've got two IPAF instructors in the room at least, maybe three, I'd conservatively say that's going to be about 14, 15 tons, and you slew over one wheel, you could be putting 70% of the weight over the wheel, Manhole covers don't stand up to that sort of weight, folks. And the operator with the gravel would not have been able to see it. Our supervisors and managers need to give, have an idea as to what they're doing if they're hiring machines in. So my two points for you to round up. Familiarization is ever so important that your staff know the difference between different types of mutes. And please, can you make sure your site managers and supervisors are trained? Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, I will happily answer them. Or if you don't, and I'm going to get away free, scot free, I'll be delighted. Thank you very much. What benefit do you think your talk today will have had to your audience? Well, primarily two main features. Familiarisation, the operators are not being given the chance to actually make themselves familiar with the units they're hiring in to do a particular job. And more importantly, just as importantly, the managers and supervisors simply aren't aware of their responsibilities when they're hiring the equipment on site. And we have to get that message across. What did you learn from Rupert's talk today? Um, highlighted the need that uh, we need to make sure that all operators are clearly uh, instructed and uh, familiarised on uh, the equipment they're about to use, rather than just uh, relying on the very basic training they may have received.